Hi friends, it's your buddy Matt, the Global Ergonomist here for Tamiki Ergonomics. The Rapid Upper Limb Assessment, or RULA, is a tool designed to assess ergonomic risk for upper extremities. It evaluates body posture, force, and repetition for a given job task in a systematic way. RULA also considers the postural and biomechanical demands of job tasks on the neck and trunk. RULA provides a user-friendly tool that requires minimal time, minimal effort, and minimal equipment. It identifies the effort associated with working postures and working forces. It accounts for performing static or repeating work. This helps target which tasks may cause muscle fatigue. RULA is a simple screen that provides a scoring method to rank pending mediation. To prepare for a RULA assessment, we first interview the worker. Then we observe their movements and their postures during work cycles. The assessment is conducted quickly, so multiple positions and tasks can be evaluated. Each evaluator can decide if both sides need to be assessed while observing the worker in action. To conduct a RULA assessment properly, we find the postural angles of six different body parts. Pictures or videos from various angles can be helpful. A transparent protractor or ergoniometer can be used to measure body segment angles from videos and images on a screen or in print. The upper arm, the lower arm, the wrist scores are based on shoulder, elbow, and wrist flexion or extension, respectively. Muscle use is a score based on posture, repetition, and load and force score. This way, the weight and frequency of the task is also noted. The neck score is based on the neck flexion or extension with adjustments for tilt and twisting of the neck. The RULA assessment tool produces a final score indicating a level of potential risk for the job task. Scores ranging from 1 to 7 correspond to risk descriptions with higher scores meaning higher risk. This user-friendly approach combined with minimal equipment makes RULA an ideal screening tool for assessing the risk of work-related upper extremity disorders. Let's have a look at an example. When you look at the RULA at first, you notice it's basically like the Reba flipped if you watched our Reba video. It differs in the fact that the upper extremity entries are on the left of RULA, they're on the right of RIBA. Similarly, the neck, trunk, and leg entries are on the left of RIBA and on the right of RULA. So it gives you an idea of which emphasizes the different body parts when you're using these tools irrespective of one another. Now when we look at the left column, that is the arm, wrist, and hand entries, column A, we notice we start with the upper arm, we move to the lower arm, we move to the wrist, and the position of the wrist, etc. When we look at the right column there, we have the neck entry, the trunk entry, the leg entry. There's also an embedded column B score and table B, and then we move on to the center, which is the tables you see down the center on both Reba and Rula. This is a way to use our conversion factors to move through the entire assessment task. So in our example, we're using a young lady who's working at a roller table. You can see because of her stature, she's reaching higher and further than the gentleman in the background where the same roller table is below hip height for him, it's above waist height for her, meaning she has to reach more extremely in this particular task. So when we gauge this appropriately, we notice that the upper arm score is going to be above 90 degrees. We're gonna find that score and then find the appropriate entry in the table A that's in the green column there. Then we're going to look at her lower arm score, the extension of her elbow. We'll find that and then enter it appropriately in table A as well. Then we'll go down to her wrist score, we'll find that We'll find the appropriate column on table A. And finally, the wrist twist, which is basically pronation and supination, palm up, palm down. We find that, we find the score, and where that column intersects with those rows, that's our first conversion factor. 
We drag that into column A and then we move through a muscle use score. That is a frequency or duration score. In this case, it's a frequency score. And we enter it appropriately. And then we have a force and load score. In this case, these are boxes between four and a half and 20 pounds. We find the appropriate weight, we enter that. And our last step in table and column A, I should say, is to go ahead and find that final score and then mark it appropriately in table C. That's going to be in the purple area of table C. Now we move on to column B on the right of the page and complete our entries. First, the next score where she's extended and rotated. We'll find that and the appropriate row in red in table B. We'll then go to the trunk score. She's forward bent at least 50 degrees. We're gonna make sure we enter that and find the appropriate column in embedded table B. And then we're going to go to her leg score. Now we can't see her legs, but we know she's up against that roller table. So we're gonna call that supported. We're gonna find that appropriate column and where that column intersects with our neck row this is our next conversion factor. We put that into the appropriate box and then same as in column A, we're going to do a muscle use score, which will be the similar score. We're going to do a force and load score, which is gonna be a similar score. This gives us our final summation at the bottom. This is our table B score and we find the appropriate column on table C. Now where that column lines up with that arm and wrist score in purple from table A, where they intersect, that's going to be our table C score. And that's going to be our final RULA score, which as you can see is a high one. This is a seven, meaning it's high priority if you're using RULA as a prioritization tool, and it's great for that. However, if you're using it as an intervention tool, it's good for that as well. So for instance, you might realize, okay, she's a level seven at this task. What can we do to intervene? Well, one of the things we could do is put a guide on the opposite side of that roller table that pushes the boxes closer to her, guides them closer to her body. Second, because of her stature, we could give her a step stool to stand up on. So she's a little bit taller, similar to the person in the background. Now, we can take another ruler. And what we'll notice is we could knock that score from a seven down to maybe a three or four. That's a 50% reduction in relative risk. So you can use ruler to show the effectiveness of your intervention. You can also use it as a prioritization tool. And this is how we apply these kind of tasks. I hope you find that interesting because there's lots of different applications to these assessment tools. If you find the rule is just too cumbersome, remember, video assessment tools like Tamiki Ergonomics can reduce time, effort, and expense in collecting, evaluating, and storing this type of ergonomic risk information. We'd be happy to tell you more, so feel free to reach out to us. In the meantime, this has been your global ergonomist, Matt Jeffs, for Tamiki Ergonomics, reminding you to work smarter, not harder. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.